There is something odd, I recently discovered in the internet. About three weeks ago, articles were published about so-called zombie animals. Nevada wildlife officials warn hunters about zombie deer. Zombie deer may be spreading deadly disease to humans, but officials say there is no way of knowing it. Nice little touch there, but yeah, you heard right. Zombie deer. Are these deer rotten creatures which crave for human flesh? Well, no, although this would be a spectacular movie. Instead, these deer suffer from a neurological fatal disease which might become transmittable to humans. And this disease is not caused by viruses or bacteria, but our own proteins. My name is Kevin Steinig, and today we talk about prion diseases, cannibalism, and contaminated food. So, welcome to this episode, and happy Halloween! The aforementioned zombie deer suffer from chronic wasting disease, or CWD, a neurological contagious disorder. The curse of this disease is quite unique. Normally, an unborn deer acquires the disease from its mother inside the womb, but only starts to exhibit symptoms later on in adult life. This means that it takes comparatively long for a hunter to decide if a deer is healthy or not, which makes the situation in the United States currently quite difficult. Once affected deers become adults, they start to eat less and less and become very thin. Moreover, excessive drinking and urination is quite common in this stage. And they also start to show abnormal patterns of behavior. Diseased individuals start to interact less and less with other organisms. And they also exhibit blank facial expressions and repetitive walking. Shortly after these symptoms arise, the deer dies. When we examine the brain afterwards, we can see a lot of tiny holes which make it appear like a sponge. But how does chronic wasting disease actually occur? CWD is a so-called transmissible spongiform encephalopathy, or TSE. Transmissible means that it is a contagious disease. The word spongiform means that we have a sponge-like morphology, while encephalopathy means that the brain is affected. It is widely believed that TSEs are caused and transmitted by prions. Okay, prions. Weird name for a pathogen, right? The name prion derives from the two words proteinaceous and infectious. And here it becomes mind boggling. You see, prion diseases are not caused by viruses or bacteria infiltrating the body of an organism and then causing the disease, but instead by proteins. And a protein which is now becoming important to us is called PRP or prion-like protein. I know, a lot of abbreviations, but this is the last one as well. So the protein PRP causes the symptoms we observe in zombie years. So what does PRP exactly do? A lot of mammals produce PRP in their central nervous system and is normally not harmful. It regulates myelin maintenance, but it is also involved in cell differentiation, keeping the shape of a cell and also cell division. However, it sometimes can happen that PRP starts to misfold and acquires a disturbed shape. This means that the three-dimensional structure of PRP is altered, and we now call it PRP-SC. Another abbreviation, sorry. And for this conversion from a healthy to an abnormal protein, PRP-SC starts to get new features, which now makes it harmful for an organism. For example, they become enormously temperature resistant. They can withstand up to 137 degrees for over 4 minutes. Furthermore, PRPSC cannot be removed by any mechanisms of the cell which would normally start to destroy such proteins. And to make it even worse, PRPSC can drive the conversion of PRP proteins into the abnormal form, which leads to an accumulation in nerve cells. And this is also the reason why chronic wasting disease and other prion diseases can be transmitted to different organisms. The almond deer is exposed to PRPSC inside the womb of the mother. And since it takes a very long time for the disease to break out, these animals will also be able to reproduce. Besides chronic wasting disease, we also know prion diseases in other organisms. This now includes scrapie in sheep, mad cow disease in cattle, or creutzfeldt jakob disorder in humans. And since these diseases are all caused by the same protein, PRPSC, prion diseases can also be transmitted to different species, and this includes now, for example, humans. And this is why the aforementioned zombie headlines are justifiable, at least to some degree. What I want to point out, however, is that I'm not aware of any reports in the United States in 2019 of humans getting infected by prion diseases after eating contaminated meat. 
However, there have been quite dramatic outbreaks of prion disorders in the last century. During the early 1950s, four people in Papua New Guinea observed abnormal patterns of behavior in some members of their community. These people would frequently experience body tremor, they would lose their ability to move, and they also would start to laugh randomly. And within one year after the first visible symptoms arise, affected people would normally die. The four people named this disease Koro, and they believed that there was some kind of black magic or witchcraft causing the disease. However, a scientist named Daniel Gedushek started to investigate this phenomenon and found that infected biomaterial from diseased people might be the cause of this outbreak. You see, some local communities in Papua New Guinea traditionally ate body parts of family members who had recently passed away. If the deceased person suffered from Kuru, the infectious protein will be enriched inside the brain and if the family members start to eat the brain, they will also become affected. After this has been uncovered, cannibalistic funeral practices were discarded and the epidemic stopped shortly afterwards. Another pre-disease, Kreuzfeld Jacob Disorder or CJD, was covered in the media during the 1990s. In March 1996, 10 cases of CJD were reported in the UK. Predominantly young adults started to exhibit a form of dementia which rapidly worsened over time. Additionally, the overall personality of these people started to change and their vision was impaired. In the end, every patient lost the ability to move or speak, entered a coma and died shortly afterwards. These victims did not practice any cannibalistic rituals, so how did this disease break out? Some years earlier, a prion disease affecting cattle spread all over the country. This disorder is called mad cow disease. And in 1993, over 1,000 cattle died each year in the UK of it. Although authorities tried to stop the spread of this disease, it took actually quite long until the causes of this epidemic was found. You see, these cattle developed mad cow disease due to the practice of feeding meat to bone meals. This means that all kinds of unused body parts of slaughtered animals were fed to cows. The result of this practice was very devastating. Over 177 people died of CJD after contracting the disease from contaminated flesh. Moreover, over 4.4 million cattle were slaughtered in order to stop further outbreaks. As a consequence, meat to bone meals are now illegal livestock feed in most countries. Fun fact, however, it is still used in dog food and cat food in the United States and is also used as a renewable energy source in the UK. So, today we saw the devastating effects of prion diseases and how it spreads. Although the provoked diseases are fatal and dramatic, it is quite fascinating how a single protein can affect different organisms in this fashion. Currently, we cannot cure any prion diseases such as Kreuzfeld Jacob disorder, but we are able to prevent it quite well. And finally, the concept of prion diseases is also relevant for other diseases. There are quite a few neurological disorders in which prion diseases might be involved in some sense. To give you an example, in the last years, more and more studies suggest prion-like features of omelet beta in Alzheimer's. We've covered the basic of Alzheimer's research in these two videos here, but let me know in the comment section if you're interested on this special hypothesis. And don't forget to like this video and also hit the subscribe and the bell button if you're new here in order to stay informed about the latest discoveries in life sciences. And with that, I'll see ya. Happy Halloween.